Welcome everyone. Happy Pentecost. Uh, and this is the first uh, church service broadcast from All Saints Church. Even though we've uh, appeared to be broadcasting from here in the past, it was an illusion. Uh, and this is uh, a good day to do that because today's kind of a turning point, as I'll talk about. And uh, so welcome to the first uh, of many uh, services broadcast from All Saints Church. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all of Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth. The hour is coming, and now is, when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
you are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive a prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory. A reading from Acts. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's needs and power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O oh Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the great and wide sea, with its living things too many to number, creatures both small and great. There move the ships, and there is that leviathan, which you have made for the sport of it. All of them look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it to them, they gather it. 
you open your hand and they are filled with good things. You hide your face and they are terrified. You take away their breath and they die and return to their dust. You send forth your spirit and they are created and so you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in all his works. He looks at the earth and it trembles. He touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God while I have my being. May these words of mine please him. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Alleluia. A reading from Paul's epistle to the Romans. We know that the whole creation has been groaning in labor pains until now. And not only the creation, but we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly while we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Now, Hope that is seen is not hope. For who hopes for what is seen? <clears throat> but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the spirit. Because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our canticle is Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his faithfulness endures from age to age. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of Truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment, about sin because they do not believe in me, about righteousness because I am going to the Father, 
and you will see me no longer, about judgment because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's a good day at All Saints. It's a, it's a turning point. Um, and such a turning point that I've, I've heard uh, what you're asking. You want to know what is next. It's a question I've not been able to answer for uh, more than a year. Uh, you're eager to move forward and discover what new thing the Holy Spirit has for us. I'm happy to announce that this uh, Feast of Pentecost is a turning point in our common life. Today is the official start of our physical regathering in person in our beautiful stone church building. This is only possible because you've been doing so well getting vaccinated. Without the vaccinations, we would still be isolating in our individual homes. The vaccinations are still happening. Some of you still need second doses. Our 12 to 17 year olds have only recently become eligible. And we can't forget our many precious members under 12 years old who are not vaccinated. Getting everyone vaccinated is still the main task right now. If you've not been vaccinated, uh, please join the rest of us who have been so that you can join us safely in the near future when we will have church events that will be entirely safe for the vaccinated, but may not be for the unvaccinated. It will break our hearts if we lose any one of you because you chose not to be vaccinated. We've had enough heartbreak already. Vaccinations are happening at such a high rate in our congregation that we uh, today are setting in motions to resume gathering regularly again. Uh, you've waited a long time for me to say that. Um, and today we have uh, a large in-person ser service immediately following this one. Uh, outdoors in a parking lot and uh, as a festive celebration of celebrating and inaugurate this moment, celebrating this moment and inaugurating the new era. Uh, what to look for next is live in-person worship services in our church that are also simultaneously broadcast on Chelmsford Telemedia and available all week on our website and YouTube. So if you've come to depend and enjoy on this uh, broadcast, uh, and you connect with our church this way, uh, that will continue. You'll just see some new changes in, your, in, the, in the service and how, how we do it, but this will still be available to you. Uh, and if you participate in our church this way without uh, coming to the in-person services, make sure we know who you are. Uh, but this new change will enable everyone to attend in person. But if you are in the hospital or simply unable to come or you live too far away, you can still have your worship service. And if the service is a pastoral service, such as a wedding or a funeral, your long distance relatives will be able to view in real time what's happening and participate in their own way wherever they are on planet Earth. How great, 
right? We've never had any broadcast capacity in the church. Since the onset of the pandemic, everything we've done this last 14 months electronically has been entirely accomplished on the personal equipment of staff and parishioners. It's surprising how well we've done with no professional equipment at all, uh, including today, by the way. Uh, we're still not all wired, even though it, it, it may look like it. It will be a very big job this summer to wire and equip the church with multiple cameras, microphones, and computers. It's never been in our budget. Um, some of you have already generously stepped forward to contribute financially to make this happen um, without us even asking. You know, thank you. If you would like to contribute to make sure that this all gets done right away and fast and well, please contact the church office or me or our senior warden, uh, Brian Hunter, who's supervising the project. Uh, and we'll get you that information, how to make sure that, how to give to that cause. While we're installing that and learning how to operate it, uh, there will be several in-person, very simple Eucharists in the church starting in mid-June. Those of you who are eager to re-enter the building for prayer and worship, well, that will be here soon. We're working on it right now to make it happen. The goal here is to be maximally normal and fully ready as the September program year kicks off. There are already weddings, memorial services, and other activities scheduled this fall that, well, had been postponed uh, far too long during the pandemic. Those of you looking for the return of the old 8 a.m. Sunday morning Eucharist and Wednesday noon Eucharist, well, you'll have that too. You'll see incremental progress week by week, all summer. The work of reconnecting our whole community, person to person, after all this time, is about more than electronics and Sunday morning logistics. And how we're going, uh, and how we're going to do that is, well, the following way. We're going to have small group gatherings um, all summer. Think backyards and other outdoor or well-ventilated places. The able people on our rector search committee are going to be running these groups, rebuilding our community through spiritual conversation as we discover who we are now and who we want to be moving forward. They've been charged by the vestry to talk to absolutely everyone in the parish. So expect to hear from them and spend some good spiritual time meeting other people at All Saints or getting reacquainted with friends that you haven't spent time with in person in a long time and see what the Holy Spirit does when we are together, once again, face to face. As part of this rebuilding the personal aspect of our church and setting in motion the community-wide aspect of our search for a new rector, I'll be offering three online Zoom sessions on Wednesday nights in June, because we still do the online, uh, and it's good for things like this. The first one, uh, we'll be with uh, some All Saints long timers talking about uh, past rectors so that we all learn what the leadership of All Saints uh, looked like in living memory. If you've not been at All Saints continuously for the last 60 years, and well, that's nearly all of you, uh, this is your chance to learn uh, what there is to learn about uh, that time and how it's influencing our present, whether we know about it or not. The second one will be on what makes Episcopal churches thrive and what leads to their decline and closure. Uh, we right now are setting All Saints up to succeed uh, for the next decade, and our community needs to be really clear about what precisely it is that will make that happen. The third and the last one will be on, uh, well, who the prospective rectors are, what qualifies them for the job, 
Um, what we know about who is out there, um, how you might know which one is for you. So if you can, uh, please come. If you're thinking that uh, this is more of an extended announcement than a sermon, <laughs> let me tell you uh, why it's a sermon. The church is an essential part of the experience of Jesus. Jesus himself said, where two or three of you are gathered in my name, there I am. Gathering and the presence of Jesus go together. St. Paul said to the Corinthians, now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. Belief in Jesus without concrete participation in the church is belief in a bodiless Jesus. Our work together in these coming months in backyards and in the church building is reclaiming physical space for Christ's body in the world. This is gospel work. This is good news. The Pentecost story is the story of the founding of the Christian church. As you heard and experienced how the, in the story, and how we've always told this story is that it involves how just a few different letters and sounds are more than enough to divide the human race and how this new Christian church community is special because it unites and overcomes all such differences and divisions. The Holy Spirit creates this community and gives it life in that sacred space where people discover themselves again and again to be the body of Christ in the world. This is why Jesus said, it's better that I go away because in going away, Jesus is extending his presence through the Holy Spirit through all time and all place. Whatever else there may be to be hopeful about in the world, this exact work, this community is always something to celebrate and feel good about. It's always easier to destroy than to build. We are building now. And I ask all of you to give yourselves to that sacred work now at All Saints as we put the church and the community back together again in the coming months. One last thing I'd like you to be aware of. Have any of you ever had a crisis and it was only when it was over that you realized how tired and exhausted you truly are? Or am I the only one who feels all the feelings after the fact? You know, that happens a lot. And the after the fact self-care is not something to skip over because it'll catch up to you later. As exciting as our work is that we start today, remember that you all have endured a momentous crisis. Once you are fully vaccinated, you know, pay attention to that fact. Visit those aging relatives you haven't seen. Visit those grandchildren you've only seen on screen. Get those elective surgeries that you've put off. Rest without worry if that's something you haven't had been able to do in 14 months. Do whatever you need to do this summer to be fully back this fall. Because this fall at All Saints is one that deserves all our best energy and it's not something you wanna miss. Our great staff at All Saints worked continuously the last 14 months. Uh, there was no summer of 2020 for them. There were, were no vacations. We needed them too much in the crisis and every part of their job was way harder than it had ever been. If any of you this summer think that something could and should be happening faster than it is, well, you might be right. But I've instructed the staff to do exactly what I just counseled you to do. They are to get better, take their postponed vacations and all such things. I'm also gonna do that uh, too, because as my late 
dear grandmother used to tell me, Paul, you can't burn the candle at both ends and in the middle too. I talked to our bishop last Thursday, and he indicated that going forward, we will continue to be somewhat more cautious with protective measures than a lot of people. You'll see it in small liturgical changes and open windows and things like that. I ask your patience about all that too. As Bishop Allen explained to me, the reason for that is that we love you, all of you. And if you think about it, we have always been more careful with you and those you love than many other communities. What is the church if it's not a place where you can, it's not a place you can trust with you? We will never take that trust for granted. So please be understanding of our caution and care and know that it's a sign of our love for you and for the most vulnerable among us. Happy Pentecost and may the Holy Spirit who founded the Christian church to be the ongoing visible presence of Jesus Christ in the world, refound and rebuild All Saints Church in our midst. And may we discover through the same spirit how when two or more of us gather in the name of Jesus, there he is. Amen. Let's say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, after that sermon, I don't think we need a lot of announcements other than uh, we have a 4 p.m. Uh, family service. And during that service, we have the uh, uh, a church school pageant, which is one of the good, the church school making pageants is one of the good things that has come out of the pandemic and the electronics. And I imagine it's good there the congregation through by the leading of the Holy Spirit is going to continue to demand that they do, that they do it because they're so wonderful. But it, to see that, uh, just log in at 4 PM with the church school families and, and see, uh, the church school's celebration of, uh, of Pentecost. Our service continues with the prayers. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray, uh, holding hands. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The prayers of the people this morning are Form 6. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. Let us remember our parishioners and family members who are health care workers, especially Teresa, Chris, Linda, Pam, Larissa, Lois, Nancy, and Kiyomi. Gail, Lee, Catherine, Ben, Dave, and Marlene, Michelle and Dave, Amanda, 
Sherry and Scott, Christy, Jessica, Sean, Laura, Jennifer, Meredith, Edith, and Rose. And we pray for all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. We pray for those in the armed forces and their families, especially for those who've been deployed overseas and all others serving their country. And we pray for accelerated peace between the Israelis and the Palestinians. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. We pray for those in our parish who are in need of healing. For Amy, Scott, Elizabeth, John, Molly, Nate, and Garrett. We pray for our families and friends who also are in need of healing. For Barbara, Patty, Linda, Barry, Sarah, Tom, Sarah, and their family. Scott, Beth, and Greg, and their family. Nichols, Heather, Dawn, Betty, for Peg, Janet, Emily, and Ellen, for Diane, Meg, Christina, Tony, Carolyn, Anna, and her family, for Dan, Sampath, Chris, Jennifer, and Joanna, and for those who are at home in nursing homes or living with chronic illnesses, especially Terry, Chaz, Vinnie and Jeanette, Larry, Ken, Catherine, Garrett, Ginny. And we pray for all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. In the Anglican Communion this week, we pray for the Anglican Church of Melanesia. In our diocese, we pray for Grace Church in Lawrence, Esperanza Academy in Lawrence, St. Anne's in Lowell, St. John's in Lowell, and for congregations, lectors, worship leaders, Eucharistic ministers, and visitors. We pray for the faith communities in Chelmsford, especially for St. Bartonance's Armenian Apostolic Church. We pray for those joining God's mission in our parish, especially for those preparing for the Summer Mystery Club and for the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, for Alan and Gail, our bishop, uh, for uh, Paul, our interim, and for Valerie Cowart, deacon. And for all bishops and other ministers. For all who serve God in his church. We pray for the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. And we pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put their trust in you. O oh God, who on this day taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore to rejoice in his holy comfort through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, you've made of one blood all the peoples of the earth, 
and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you, bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to unmute yourself as we exchange the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And also with you. Peace, everybody. Peace. 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 Let us say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. May God, who by the Holy Spirit caused those of many tongues to proclaim Jesus as Lord, strengthen your faith and send you out to bear witness to him in word and deed, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.
Thank you, everybody. Happy Pentecost. Mm -hmm. Thank you.